Okay, it's been a while since I've done anything tutorial like at all, and this isn't going to be, I, can, I imagine, one of the best tutorials ever, but then none of mine are that great. Uh, but I wanted to run something by you because I, I've kind of been playing with something, and you, you know what it's like when you kind of get into something, you think, oh, this is really quite good, and I'd like to be a bit of an evangelist for this particular product. Uh, well, that is PBR Painter 2. So this is the, uh, whoops, try that again. This is PBR Painter uh, and it's on uh, Blender Market at the very, very reasonable price, I think, of $24. Uh, it's quite popular, you can, see, you can see there's 500 plus, but actually that's nothing really, actually. I think everybody who owns Blender, personally, should buy a copy of this uh, because uh, it's very easy to use. Um, and it's quite impressive. Well, for me it is. I'm sure people who are using Substance Painter, Substance Painter may uh, disagree, but um, for me personally it's been um, a bit of a lifesaver. Uh, but I was messing around, I went through all the tutorials, of which there are quite a few actually, talking of which, let's just bring the tutorial page here. And you can see this is the um, YouTube website and there are quite a few tutorials to getting started and if you go through them all uh, you can uh, get a really good idea of how it works uh, but the, basically the one I'm going to do today is I'm go going to do a combination of this particular procedural rust one and if you want to get a really good tutorial that's the one to go to uh, I'm going to do a hashed version of it uh, my own kind of um, basic version but the reason I'm doing it actually is because uh, I I was messing around and I made a, like a little chain link in order to do my own rust as you can see here and I wanted something to put it on so I was using PBR painter I made this little uh, wooden post with a bit of moss on it and so I'm going to go through both of those today I'm not going to do a very good job I'm, I'm sure and um, because I'm probably going to forget a few bits I've only been using it a day or so and uh, only a few hours in each day uh, have I kind of been messing around with it uh, so I'd like to run through the process of what I did to get to this stage and you can see what you think of um, not my, so much my efforts of PBR of using PBR Painter but actually PBR Painter itself uh, so let's open a basic scene and here are my models ready to be painted and just as a preliminary starting point it is important that you do have a fairly decent UV map for them both uh, so uh, it doesn't have to be you know super detailed or anything or, but, but as long as it's kind of nicely laid out uh, and like it it's filling filling the uh, available space you know quite nicely uh, that's it really so let's start with the wooden post because that's probably the simplest one and to do that let's go straight to I've got it selected and I'm going to go to texture paint where I have my PBR painter installed and the very first thing we do is we we, we uh, just close everything down that's getting in my way we set up material for PBR painter and we're not using the current background material at all so we can ignore that and we don't need to back it up because it's not, I haven't done anything uh, so I'll go OK and that opens up this very familiar looking kind of layer portal uh, very much like the uh, material layout uh, very familiar which is nice and the first thing we do is create a new layer and it's going to be a multi-channel layer which means much like the PBR uh, nodes it has various uh, normals, roughness, etc. And we'll start with 2K and we'll call this, what should we call this? I think I called this wood base in my original. So we'll go wood base. And just before I go any further, at the moment you're not seeing anything of this layer here, we're just seeing the original layer. I have to kind of either paint it or fill it with paint with the actual paint but to start off with this little square box up here allows you to see your original uh, PBR layout and uh, all your backgrounds and you can change all the various things if you wanted to here 
the roughnesses etc uh, now it's not going to make any difference to me on this particular one uh, so it's kind of irrelevant but if if for example you're just going to be painting a little bit over uh, I don't know a bit of metal or something uh, that was what you could do but in fact you could have kept your original layout uh, previous to that when you actually created the layer but anyway I dive I uh, going off on a tangent so my wood base the next step is to import the actual textures I'm going to use for my wood and I will provide a link to all the textures or um, just provide them in the actual blend file which I'll uh, provide a link to but they are all free of course I'm not giving you any one that, ones that I uh, shouldn't be giving you and uh, these particular ones the wood ones I just took a photo an old wood photo and uh, from a free um, stock footage website uh, site and uh, I just made a normal out of it and a roughness out of it I've done one for the sides and one for the top and so they're the materials I'm going to import for the wood so I'm just going to copy that into here I'm going to get the wood color normal and roughness as long as they're named appropriately it will recognize them all and it will import them and literally turn them on here ready to be tweaked and so for example the base color here is, is ready to go and if I just use the fill tool here straight away you can see it's applied to the whole stump as it were the whole uh, wooden post and we can change some various options here uh, we could actually use an ambient occlusion texture as well which I'm, I don't think I really need but we can excuse me adjust the RGB curves if we need to uh, so for example uh, let's uh, the overall lightness um, not going to do that we could just use saturation I think the, it's quite light actually so probably take so it's just uh, down just a tad something like that maybe saturated a little bit more I can always change this later that's what's nice about this it's all uh, non-destructible obviously it's not looking very uh, very well cut at the moment uh, so we can change as soon as you apply a texture you get this uh, texture mapping option here and we can change some things on here let's rotate it 90 degrees already looks better and let's just change the scale to a bit smaller and I think that looks pretty good um, obviously the top uh, I've got another texture for uh, so just for the time being um, I'll leave it like it is and I think that looks pretty good I think maybe it needs to be a, be a bit smaller and so you can actually move these as well up or down left or right so if you wanted to have these coincide with corners for example or not <laughs> I think not in my case let's leave it like that okay good so let's add another layer now and let's put that just on the top here so we click on add layer let's call this wood end 2k again oh, and you can choose you can just literally jump to whatever uh, size you want here okay once again import the textures wood end color normal and roughness and these ones I'm just going to paint on top and it only paints on what you can see so I'm just going to move it away so I don't have to change the size of my brush and I'm going to just erase a few bits I don't want on there I think that will do uh, but we do need to change the size of that that top there by the way is represented by this little square here so I mean I could have made that bigger when I actually made my UV map but it doesn't matter because I have my texture scale here and let's double that as well and let's kind of move it somewhere let's see a bit of the center my 
faffing now. Okay, that will do. Well, once again, you can come back to this and change this at any time you like, uh, and uh, it's uh, totally um, editable. So there's our base color of our wood, which works quite well, I think. So let's add a moss layer now, and let's call this moss. Okay, okay. Let's add our moss images. And I've got these moss images from the Blender Kit website. If you don't know what Blender Kit is, it's really worthwhile uh, add-on for Blender, which I'm pretty sure comes with Blender. You just need to turn it on, uh, but you need to have a. Um, it's free, but you need to have a, a like a. You need to have a, like a membership or whatever you call it. It's a subscription? No, not even subscription. You know, we join the website and you can download stuff. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to import these images. And you won't see anything, of course, one there on, because I need to either fill it or paint it. If I painted it, I mean, I could. Let's just undo that. I could if I hit F and make it a lot smaller. Just paint on here. And that's quite a nice way of doing it, you know, at any point. Uh, but it doesn't really get to show off the mask tools, which I want to show off today. So to start off with, I'm going to fill the whole thing with moss. And now I can come down and create a mask to hide a lot of this moss. And this is really where I think this comes into its own. And the first one, although I don't really need to do this, I'm going to because I think it, it looks quite, it's quite a nice thing to show. Uh, and uh, it's kind of useful. Uh, I'm going to create a geometric mask. And the masks, as soon as you do that, you get this extra uh, kind of opening up uh, details here with um, selected mask color ramp and mask stack color ramp. And at the moment, I've only got one mask on there, uh, so they will both affect it. Uh, but uh, this particular one here, and if I select preview selected mask on mesh, I can create that geometric mask. But now this particular one needs cycles to see it properly. So let's turn cycles on. I say properly to see it at all. <laughs> and let's go to the cycles renderer. And we have some options to show the where are we? The curvature. So basically this is the type of um curvature of the object. If you if you've got a simple one, it doesn't tend to well, I've not got it working yet, uh, but um it might be just me mess not knowing what I'm doing but you can kind of see the more of geometry you have um, it's the more it works for you but basically it works on the uh, edges where the kind of geometry is and you do need more geometry but I find personally that the curvature with bevel and this uses is this uses cycles bevel um, node as it were and this one it looks a lot better and it gives you some options to um, change the radius and will the um, creator of this suggests using a larger radius because you can always tighten it up later which makes a lot of sense and so that's it in cycles but I don't want to work in cycles uh, so the good thing is I can turn this into a normal texture mask as it were and so the way I do that is I just click this button here and it writes it doesn't need to be 4K, but you can see it writing here. And once it's written, it will turn it off. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Turn it turns itself off from seeing it, as it were. So I can come back down to my my mask here, and if I preview select a mask, you'll see it there, and it does a pretty you know darn good job. Uh, and if I turn that off again, now you'll start to see that just on the edges we've got this moss, which uh, if I go to the mask itself, preview again, and start 
tightening it up and making it a bit brighter and now turn that off you can see I've got this look of um, moss just on the edges there which doesn't really work for moss I'm pretty sure that moss kind of grows everywhere uh, it's not just on the corners uh, but I thought it would be worthwhile having it showing you how it works and so there I'm just mess messing around with this uh, as you can see so there's the one mask and I'm just going to turn it off for the time being and make a more practical mask and I think uh, and my more practical mask will be a procedural one so let's add a mask let's make it procedural Go OK it defaults to the noise texture which so far is the only one I've used uh, but you have a few options in there and once again preview selected mask on mesh you can already see what's happening here uh, but we really need to make it look a lot more kind of detailed and so we can use some options the first thing I like to do is kind of bring the the lights the white and the, the black point and the white point closer together and then start to change the scale to more of a moss size scale a bit more detail a bit more roughness a bit tighter and now if I turn that off you'll start to see the moss here now in fact really uh, although you think it looks like you're going to get a lot there a lot of moss coming through uh, it's only when it's really very bright do you start to see it come through like so and that th I think that works quite well and we need more moss than that so basically using that procedural mask I can just start to tighten it up a little bit like so now if I turn the other mask back on we can essentially take some of the corners off I'm going to turn that one off for a second preview it again and so what I want to do on this particular mask is kind of invert it so that the colors so where it's black well I'll have no moss showing where it's white I'll have all the moss showing and if I select them both together now and go preview mask stack on mesh you'll see the combination of them and so now I can start to use this mask stack color ramp and tighten things up a lot more like so and go back to my procedural you can see hmm, rename that one to edge where like so and I think that's pretty darn good that well let's see shall we there we go so we have the moss showing through quite nicely uh, the moss itself actually is a bit big so let's go to the moss here go to the texture mapping and let's double the size well half the size in a way <laughs> double the size scale here and that looks better and so lastly rather than having the moss here I'd rather have it all over I'd rather have more here and less here and so to do that we'll create one more mask and we'll make that a gradient mask so and we'll just preview that selected mask on the mesh like so you can see it going from left to right or right to left <laughs> and so we want it to go from now we want the white at the bottom and the black at the top so we need to rotate it round minus 90 and then we need to move it up So we've, we'll go about halfway and maybe we'll scale it. No, we won't. What we will do is tighten it up so it's a bit brighter. And if we just 
show that particular one you'll see that now give it a second we've just got the mask at the bottom so let's pull it up a little bit and if you combine that now with the other masks you can see how well it works so I, I kind of want a bit more space here and a bit more at the top so I kind of want it all over uh, so we can change the blend factor a little bit so we've got a bit more there and our procedural in fact our gradient would just drop down a little bit Let's try that, shall we? Need a bit more. More at the top. Okay, I think that works for me quite well. So let's call it a day there for the for the tree post, the wooden post. I think uh, let's just save where I'm at and we will go to the chain now and this one here I'm going to do exactly the same as Will the owner and creator does in let me find the video in this particular video here excuse the ads let me just so this is the video procedural rust with PBR Painter. Let me show you how to make and some really cool. He does up the scale a little bit. We just jump through to the the end. Pulling this back. And he creates this, this really button. nice. Yeah. So rust, that's kind of the gist. Rust texture here. So that's my goal. <laughs> that's my goal. So let's uh, get started on the rust. So the first thing we will do is go to our texture paint tab and set up material for PBR painter okay we will add a layer 2k and call this metal this is going to be our base metal and for this one I also went to blender kit and downloaded a fairly nice metallic texture which I will put a link to as well but let me load that in here metal rough it's only 1k texture but because we'll be scaling it it should work quite well we'll do metallic normal roughness and base color import those and you'll see they all turn on quite nicely here and then we will use the fill again to do the to fill the whole lot and it's not looking very metallic at the moment and so I'm guessing oh my metallic didn't come in for some reason so I'm just going to, just going to turn it on manually go to texture and import that particular texture metal metallic and now suddenly everything's looking a lot more metallic uh, it's a bit Big. I wanted this kind of like pitted metal look, quite a rough look anyway, uh, which I think it works quite well. And we'll just scale it up. Yeah, I think that works quite well as it is. Uh, if you notice, if you notice here, I've actually got some screen space reflections and ambient occlusion on so I'm just going to take those off to make it look um, less good <laughs> to make it look more uh, paintable as it were and so there's our base metal texture very simply set up and so now comes for comes the piece de la resistance I think that's the way they say it or somebody says it not me anyway let's add a new layer and make it rust layer call it rust 2k again Okay, and 
for this we are going to use a base color and we're going to use a um, constant and uh, I know a big pardon we're not going to use constant we're going to use procedural of course uh, which gives us this procedural color ramp and if I click preview on mesh you'll see it here and we're looking for that kind of noisy look again so uh, it's a matter of scaling things up and the first thing I think I'll do is just so I can actually see it better is just pull in the whites and the blacks and then we can start to scale it I think it's probably worth before I do that it's probably worth changing the scale here so we're looking for that typical kind of rusty texture which works quite well, a bit of detail and a bit of roughness let's put it in so it's not completely all over there we go I think that's okay but of course we don't want it to be white and black we want it to be a variation of colors so I'm just going to spend a bit of time setting these up just bear with me for a second okay so what I've done is I've just put four um, pointers in here to give us this kind of um, look of rust that we're hoping to achieve which I think it works so you can kind of do your own colors here actually maybe mm. just play just a little bit more yeah okay I think that will do I don't think that looks quite well, quite nice and if I turn that off now and do the fill again basically that will go all over the whole uh, chain setup here uh, but as you can see I'm only using the base color for now so I do need to hide the the uh, metal color uh, so I'm just going to use a constant and metallic I don't want, don't want it to be metallic at all really so let's just leave that off for now um, the roughness I want that to be quite rough more of a matte almost all the way up I think and the normal of course we want that to be constant and we're going to mm, do we want that to be constant bear with me so just having a quick look on what I did before so we've got combine the normals on here and I just clicked it here so as we as it stands at the moment we've got this uh, rust all over and it's not um, quite as oh here we go so let's put the bump up okay what I need to do before the normal before the rust becomes bumpy I need to actually add a new mask and so our very first mask is going to be a preset mask and it is going to use the grunge which if you notice it says cycles next to it so once again we need to use cycles to do this but I'm just going to preview it here so we can actually see it and then go to cycles once more back to our texture mask and we can see what it looks like and it's basically a grunge mask that um, he's made which works quite well um, I don't think I need to play with it too much okay so once we've done that once we're happy with it I can once again click this button here to merge it or to flatten it as it were and 
could do with a little button to change the, the uh, texture size. And that's just baking right now. And let it do its stuff. And once it's baked, it turns the actual preview mask off and you can see the rust there coming in quite nicely uh, but let's now turn it back to this EV it's a lot quicker and back to this mode here and just for the argument's sake just so you can see the mask here there it is now and we'll just rename that to grunge mask and that works quite well I think uh, what I'll do is just play with the I kind of want it to be more rather than less and anyway you can see the uh, the rust just appearing on those particular places uh, so if I want it to appear all over uh, but more in those particular places but to do that we will add another mask and we'll just make this one a procedural and we'll do the usual preview selected mask It's a bit over the top on that one. Okay, so what we'll do right now is preview both of them together and we want to just in the main actual stack just bring the whites out probably a bit more than they are something like that and let's have a look and see what that looks like it's not showing the rust like I was hoping it would so I think it might be a case of doing it on the actual okay let's go back to this procedural I, want, I don't want it to be all over okay so we need to have some bump on it so now our normal if we take our bump map up now we should get this quite nice looking rust oh do you know what I've done I think I've even inverted this okay and so what I've done is where it's flattening it flattening out it basically means I've got it too white so let's preview this again so the white bits here I need to have some more detail in them so let's take this right back down my procedural let's drop that a little bit hopefully that will start to look a bit better now going to multiply the mask on my primary color a bit more oh where are we primary color Okay, that's not looking bad. It's a bit too rough. Let's take that normal back down to where I was before. 
one and let's now play with these masks coverage isn't quite as much as I want we're almost there it's looking fairly rust rusty like but not quite like a And I'm just playing around a lot. Let's just go back to these normals now. Push these bumps, just bump up a bit. I think that's looking okay. I'm just going to play around just a little bit. Bear with me while I. Yep, I think I think I'll call it a day there. I think the maybe the normal was a little bit a bit high. Whoops. Let's put it to 0.5 and take that mask multiplier down to one. Okay, there you go. So anyway, as I said before. Do not um, do not hesitate to go and have a look at this video here. Procedural Rust with PBR Painter 2.1 or Blender, but he does an actual much better job as, as, than I do, and uh, creates some really quite nice rust there. Uh, so, but the combined look. Let's go back to the actual wood base as well. Just add a little plane here. And so, of course, the final thing, which is definitely worth mentioning, is back in Texture Paint, you have the option to bake these layers into their own basic PBR setup. So, color, um, roughness, normal etc etc all the ones that you have used within the setup itself and uh, you can export them to when you do them you gives you a choice to export them to uh, an ex to save textures externally uh, which I won't go into now uh, but all of this is on his website uh, so on the YouTube site should I say uh, but that is basically PBR painter uh, for you and uh, I won't say um, it's better than any of the others. I, I've, I've have tried a, a one or two of the others, and um, I found that this one is the best one for me, and I've enjoyed working with it. It's very straightforward. It uses um, a layering system which works really well. We use, uh, uses the masking system which is set up uh, really well as far as I'm concerned. It's not Substance Painter, of course, uh, but then it's twenty-four dollars one payment, and. Um, that yeah you know for blender and for most purposes for what i and i'm sure a majority of other users will use it for it's more than enough uh, so there you go so uh, i do encourage you to head on over to the website the youtube website and have a look at some of the videos there and uh, to of course to have a look at the actual plugin itself pbr painter there you go thanks for listening and take care and oh and i will Finally, I'll just upload, I'll, I'll put a link to download this particular file. It won't have the, won't have the actual PBR painter stuff on it. Obviously, you need the 
plugins for that uh, but I will save the textures and you can actually have a play around with the actual outputted image textures if you like for want of a better word okay thank you very much for listening and God bless you